point of discussion. We're continuing our Batman the Animated Series uh, recap with two episodes. Uh, and this is the order that HBO Max put these episodes because they probably aired at a different air day, but also the episodes are when they aired, they were in and out of continuity in terms of like what happened first and everything. So this is just clearly uh, HBO Max's order. So point of view and the clock king. Um, yes. So point of view, I think that's uh, such a well-written episode because it's basically Batman meets uh, Rashomon. If you've ever seen that, uh, that Akira Kurosawa movie where it's three recollections of the same event and how memory, each one gets it uh, differently. Right. Um, because you see the three cops, Bullock, Montoya, and then that other cop, I forget his name, but they're, they're, they're all, yeah, yeah, they're all kind of giving, and I, I really like the idea that they're all giving their own interpretation of not only Batman, but also um, their interpretation of the crime. Yes. And everything else. And it all changes with kind of like person's perspective and everything like that. Not only that, but also people obviously changing their perspective. Embellishing, yeah. Yeah, like embellishing or purposefully lying. Mm -hmm. and such it's, a, it, huh? Such a, this is one of the best Bullock episodes because it's like, yeah, of course he would fucking lie. He's, uh, he's kind of full of himself. RV Bullock. Yeah, of course, uh, like, of course, when Bullock tells his side of the story, like, he, he is Batman. Yeah. You know, he, he, you know, he was doing everything. Batman just came and messed everything up. I had that. And I thought that was really interesting. Uh, they did the same thing in um, Gotham Knight. Uh, Gotham Knight. Yeah. Where it was different points of view of uh, Oh, that's kids. for the kids. Yeah. Oh, that um, episode. Um, yeah, for, I don't think it's called Gotham Knights because I, I'm thinking... Uh, there's also another, um, do you remember they had an animated sort of uh, prequel to The Dark Knight that came out before the movie is called Batman Gotham Knight, and they had a very similar episode of Deep no, yeah, that's what it, that. That's what it was called. It was called Gotham Knight. Oh, okay, it is, okay. And uh, what was it? It was, a, it was an anthology where they, it had like prequels to The Dark Knight. Yeah. Of like, just like instant, it, it was basically like, um, what was it? Like people in Gotham talking about Batman or uh, Batman dealing with like other issues besides yeah. the Joker and stuff like that. It was really yeah. good. Mm -hmm. it, was really, a, really it was good. a great, it was a great film. Um, yeah. The animation is really solid too. There's a lot of uh, really um, interesting animators that have done anime as well. So that was cool. Um, oh, because I was, I was going to say that episode where the three kids uh, tell their own recollection of Batman. I, I love that episode too. It's in the new Batman Adventures. Yeah, it's it's such a they they're so they've done it so many different times. Yeah, and everything like that. But it's a solid, solid idea of mm -hmm. like we should just have somebody else tell a story of Batman from a different right. point of view. Yeah, and because we always see Batman from Bruce Wayne's point of view, mm -hmm. and he's the hero. Yes, you know, but to kids, is he a hero? To yeah. you know, a, other adults like police officers, stuff like that. What yeah. do they see when this like crazy person jumps in through a window as a giant bat? As a giant bat, it just starts right. beating up criminals. Well, I was gonna you say know? um that one police officer's uh, recollection of the events and for how he sees things, and I guess from his perspective, like everything's like almost like Batman has superpowers, like the way he's subduing people, his gadgets. You know, that's how like a regular dude was like, holy shit, like you know, and that buys into like Batman's whole thing is like playing on people's like superstition and their like uh their fear and they're kind of like he wants to appear mythical and this episode kind of shows that in a way yeah it's interesting uh the idea the, int if the interesting idea is that oh yeah batman is just a man mm -hmm. and he's able to kind of do everything and because i like one of them said that he he like appeared and reappeared all over the place like he could yeah. teleport yeah you know and it was and like i didn't like like he was just all over the place. He was like going in and out, in and out. And in your mind, you're kind of going like, oh, well, he's like grappling or he's like mm -hmm. using the shadows and he's like, you know, he's maneuvering around yeah. them. So that way, like, they don't know that, that he's there. Mm -hmm. He was and trained like as a that. ninja. Yeah, you know, trained, trained as a ninja. Mm -hmm. And I always thought that was kind of, I thought that was kind of interesting of like, you're right. Like uh, where it, it, people don't understand what happened you it's like you blew their mind it's mm -hmm. like uh it's like somebody watching um like a it? magic show like magic Penn and show. teller 
you know? Yeah, like somebody watching a magic show and just having their mind totally blown because like, how did they do that? You know? Exactly. And whereas having um like and you and you know, you kind of know the gimmicks because you hung out with Batman, you know. Everybody knows the gimmicks because that they hung out with Batman. But to see somebody who is the uninitiated, uh, <laughs> as Bane would say, yeah, uh, it's interesting. I love it. I love yeah. this episode. It was I, fun. I, I, yeah. Honestly, so far in these watchthroughs, I, I haven't really gotten to an episode where I'm like, Ugh. yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> like, and you know, it's entertaining too. Just like you know, all the voice actors do such a good job. Like Ron Froman's in this episode. Uh, Right. I think, uh, you know, out of all the voice actors, like, we always go to Kevin Conroy and Mark Hamill, but, like, Robert, uh, I'm going to butcher his last name, Costanza, um, he's a comedic <laughs> actor. He, he voices Bullock, and I just, whenever I'm reading the comics, whenever I read Bullock, I always, like, imagine that voice in my head, you know, this guy with, like, this uh, New York sort of accent, you know? Hey, man. To- like, yeah, the... Yeah. The, the the Harvey Bullock of the animated series is definitely whatever I read a comic book. That's the Definitive that's the voice, voice I always look. It's yeah. always weird too because Bullock is portrayed in such different ways. Mm-hmm. Like uh, like sometimes he's kind of like he's like kind of jo- he's kind of like yoked. Yeah. And everything like that. Like he's real tall and he's yoked and everything else. And whenever I read a comic book, this is the voice that comes out even when he's like. Yeah, <laughs> he's just this yoked. wise guy. Yeah, it's it's pretty good because I was gonna say, um, yeah, this episode's just so fun. Um and yeah, it really provides us like a different perspective into the DCPD and everything. Yeah. Um, so I guess going to uh going to the next episode, Clock King, we see kind of uh this reminded me a little bit of the episode with the Joker that we just watched, where it's just like mm-hmm. just a random citizen um citizen Gotham being messed with. You know, because it's a tough place to live um, uh, where uh, Temple forgets, mm. excuse me, uh, Temple, you know, he's just this weird old man. And uh, we see the uh, the mayor of Gotham, again, Hamilton Hill. And, uh, you know, it just shows this, uh, this, this, this person that just turns to crime, you know, the clocking. Yeah, the... <laughs> The whole thing with the Clock King, though, is that I, I really did enjoy the idea that they were using some deep cut characters for the yeah. show. Mm-hmm. Like, the Clock King wouldn't necessarily be on my top of 20 characters yeah. to, like, use in a Batman right. TV show. Like, the Clock King is he's an interesting character. He's not, like, my favorite. No, yeah. Like, him and Condiment King, I could do without, but... Um... How Wait. you shut your mouth? <laughs> Condiment King is my favorite. Oh man, I okay. love Condiment King. Right. I won't. Uh, I won't I, uh, be smirch con- Condiment. King. I'm telling you right now, I want a scene in the movies with Condiment King because I feel like that would just be hilarious. Oh man, somebody dressed up in a green leotard with condiments on his back. Yeah, and fighting <sighs> Batman and Bat because I want that scene from the animated series. I really do. Just where- do. Where he's where Batman's chasing him on top of a roof, he goes to go shoot, and then all of a sudden, like Batman doesn't know what it is, so he blocks with his cape, and then it just and he's just got like mayonnaise mustard. all mustard yeah. or mayonnaise all over yeah. his like cape, and he's just like poor Batman. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, it's like it reminds me of uh, from Austin Powers with the random pass. Did you just hit me with your shoe? Honestly, <laughs> that throw, really hurts. Did you just throw mustard at me. <laughs> Like it's gonna take, uh, you know. I can't get this out. I have to wash it. <laughs> it's gonna. Stain. You know what my butler is gonna have to do to get this out? <laughs> yeah. Mustard. If it I stains. ever, if I ever do any sort of Batman sort of thing or have the opportunity to write Batman, I'm definitely gonna throw Condiment King in just for you. I'm telling you, dude. Condiment King has so many spots. Not only that, but also I love the idea of after he stains Batman's outfit, he just knocks him out in one punch. And he's just like, <laughs> like very much going like. The city's getting weird. <laughs> yeah, it's like, geez. but, <laughs> but uh, kind of, or excuse me, Clock King. Um, I don't know. I was kind of enjoying sort of. Um, this was kind of like a classic sort of like almost Adam West villain of the week sort of thing. Um, he has this yes. like uncanny ability to just be on time all every single time. 
Um, and he's kind of a one-off character. We do see him in uh, Justice League Unlimited. He helps mm-hmm. out the Suicide Squad or Fast Fork Sex because they they couldn't um, call him that, right? They couldn't call it the Suicide Squad. Yes. But yeah, it was um, it was interesting. Um, this episode's kind of villain of the week. It's um, a little gypsy, but it's um, I don't know. I thought it was a well-written episode in terms of its concept. Uh, Nick, what did you think? I liked it. I mean, the idea that uh, what was it like? Batman's trying to stop an assassination. That's a mm-hmm. uh, that's pretty heavy stuff for a kids' TV show. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> the fact that uh, which uh, the con the clock king is is trying to kill the mayor mm-hmm. uh, is it's dark. It's real. Yeah. It's real dark stuff. And I totally understand why. Uh, what was it like? Because I, I know that later on they were talking about like uh I mean it's like, like a couple of documentaries and everything else they were talking about how um, there was a lot of times when people were doing comic books and then they would go to the animation uh, studios and then the comic the comic writers would hate the animation studios mm-hmm. because they wouldn't get anything right they would write things that were just so stupid and so childish that they were like this is dumb and. A, a story like this where it kind of brings it into like kind of like this is it's another day in the life of batman yeah where it's just like all right well some some evildoer is gonna try and assassinate the, the you know the mayor. The, the mayor um it, it really does kind of like bring you back into that story and kind of like grounds the world and just kind of going like all right cool anything can happen inside of gotham yeah. Yeah, because I was going to say, also, um, looking back, watching these as an adult, like, you see kind of the politics of the show where Hamilton Hill isn't really portrayed the best. Like, he's kind of a jerk. Where no, it's like no. The... I completely understand why he wanted to kill him. Yeah. He's not wrong. Mm-hmm. He's not... <laughs> like, some politicians, dude, they're just awful people, you know? Like, Hamilton Hill, uh, you know, yeah, is yeah. probably, like, a Republican. He's, uh... <laughs> you know, he's like... like... Yeah, man, it's, it's it's one of those things of you know maybe, maybe we do better without him. You know? Yeah, maybe he's not wrong. Yeah, maybe Hamilton Hill like voted for Trump. <laughs> I don't know, man, but all I know is that. It, but it's interesting too. It's interesting to just kind of see like because it's not that Batman respects Hamilton Hill. Yeah, it's not that he thinks he agrees with his politics. It's not anything like that. It's just you're trying to kill someone. I'm going to stop you. I will right. be in your way. Yeah. Yeah, you know, Batman's moral code, it even protects people um, that are, are, you know, as long as it's a life, he tries to do his best to save it. And, you know, Batman's kind of uh, altruistic, you know, law and order. He tries to uphold it for the most part. He is a vigilante, but. Yeah, yeah, and I I always thought that was an interesting thing uh, because you can see it more and more as in these rewatches of, um, there's a line in Justice League Unlimited that Amanda Waller says, where she where she describes batman and she, uh, bruce wayne and says i have never met anyone that cared so much about their fellow man mm-hmm. as bruce wayne yeah like bruce wayne doesn't show the fact that he not respects everyone but he has the value of life yeah and he respects what it means to take that away from someone that he will save anyone yeah at any cost and he does have this value of like life is precious and Mm -hmm. i and you know uh in in an instant it can be taken away so i have to try my hardest to make sure that i can save as many people as possible yeah exactly yeah no one deserves to die according to that so yeah like no one deserves to be murdered no one deserves to, to to die unjustly and everything else and i think that's so interesting because it with that little tagline and then you take that into batman the animated series and kind of watch through this entire like season series so far in every episode you can kind of see what amanda waller is talking about you can mm-hmm. see his his love for for his fellow man you, you can see how much he cares for his friends yeah. and his family and yeah. stuff like that and i i do really feel that this is something that the comic books have kind of strayed away from a lot of and it's it's unfortunate mm-hmm. where he's more of a psychopath that is kind of a dick to his kids mm-hmm. and everything like that than he is this caring father yeah that gives a shit right 
uh, yeah, you know, it's just, uh, cause I, I tell people it's like, you know, it's not only just from a writing standpoint, um, where it's like, you know, he's just mo a lot more interesting. And if he doesn't kill, if he has this moral code, because it's how he reacts to the world and like these decisions is that they're exploring that he has to make. And also it just makes sense for the character where it's just like Batman is this kid that was traumatized where he's like, he takes things to the extreme. Like, it's not like he's a cartoon character, but he has like such um, absolutes in his beliefs because in a way he's still kind of the kid at heart he's still this child um, where he, that's the way a child sees things. It's like, there's right. And then there's wrong, um, you know, and he, he like follows his like word and his like code, um, you know, and it's like this weird innocence to him. So yeah, I guess I was really interested to, uh, to see that in this episode. Um, but I was just going to say, uh, I, I skipped over that point. If, if you're interested in seeing Batman kill, just read the Punisher, you know, just read another character because it's just so integral to his character. It makes sense, you know, it does yeah but yeah and but my thing is for the com for comic book writers lately is that mm -hmm. they they've really strayed away from this family aspect of yeah. Batman, and it, it not like not completely but the fact that in the animated series you can really tell that batman looks to uh was it batman looks at uh was it tim or you know, Dick, Dick yeah. like sons. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they they're very much like his kids. Yeah, and he is trying. Which are, he's trying his best to teach them, right? What he doesn't know. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah, he's a he's, mentor. Yeah, he's he's trying to be a mentor. He's trying to be a father, and it's yeah. like I don't know how to do this. Yeah, and, well, I, and he's gonna make mistakes. Yeah, exactly. It's very fallible. I was gonna make the joke though. It's like. Everyone except Batgirl because they have that weird romance. <laughs> him and so, uh, him and what's up? Yeah, because you know he's a child fucker. No. Yeah, that was a that was a weird sort of thing. It was it, it's a weird thing that Bruce Tim did, but also if you're if because in Batman Beyond that is the reason why no one's talking. Yeah, that's canon. Um, it's canon. You? I I I remember reading the Batman Beyond comic books, and it's like, why don't Batman? You know, because it, it's supposed to be those like that whole like this is why they all don't talk, mm -hmm. and it's like oh yeah, technically Bruce Wayne slept with Barbara while she was dating Tim, while she was dating Dick, Dick, yeah, and Dick found out about it, mm -hmm. and then that's why he that's why he was like screw you bats and just like left, and yeah. I was like yeah that's kind of that, that's 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 rational that's mm -hmm. a that's a rational reason to leave yeah that ends like, a very very fallible person yeah man because batman fucks that's what <laughs> that's what they wanted to show it's such a weird that's such a weird like thing bruce tim tries to push love the guy great animator great storyteller but dude like chill the fuck out with that um yeah.